I'm recording uh, uh, Richard Sarabji from now, from now on. Now on. Oh hello! I look. I I I've got to try and record you. I've got a, a recording going in a minute. Okay. All right. We'll try that. Uh, yes. Oh, well, I, I I just turn it on. Yes. All right. Uh, and uh, so, uh, Richard, would you like to uh, talk a little about your aunt? Uh, how you got uh, first got in touch with her? Start again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll start again. <laughs> All right. right. Well, would you say, say something about uh, about Cornelia, your aunt? Uh, oh yes. Well, she was a great influence on my childhood. I knew her very well, and she was very keen that I should follow her footsteps by being a, becoming a lawyer. She started her campaign when I was nine. Oh. Um, yeah. But I told her I was going to be a teacher. And so she. She tried everything you could imagine to make me change my mind. Oh yes, and uh, so that was when you started uh, being interested in, in philosophy, was it? Uh, in a way I was interested in philosophy, although I didn't know it, 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 its name. Yes, I was interested in philosophy and I was, I was very keen on teaching. Oh yes. Uh, I could see the interest of, of the law and she did have me to, um, to hear a a case in a, a, a court in uh, the central London, it may have been the Old Bailey, I can't remember. Yes, it yes. was a fraud case and uh, it was quite a distinguished judge. He came up to me afterwards and said, did you believe that man? I was nine. Yes. Right. And I said, no. And he said, oh, what a relief. Oh, did I. Gosh. And uh, to tell me about your, 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 what did your uncle, you, you used to uh, be, be, be in touch with your uncle? Oh, oh yes, I, I've now written a book on him too. Um, my, my uncle was um, a very adventurous person, uh, rather the opposite of my aunt, uh, because he was rather shy. But the adventures in both cases were extreme. He uh, was involved in some of the first uh, electrical engineering in New Zealand as a little boy of 12. Uh, and then in Russia, under the Tsars first, um, uh, he was caught up in the revolution, they said they'd shoot him that night as a British spy, oh, God. Uh, though actually he'd earlier find himself standing in the street besides Lenin. He, he, he nipped up some stairs to get out of the way of all the soldiers and a uh, little man was in front of the soldiers and little man stepped up the same steps beside him and announced his programme. 
that was Jean, Jean, Jean Lenin. Lenin. But he got into trouble um, when he was thought to be a British spy. He said, no, I, you're wrong. I'm not a British spy. I come from New Zealand. It's a socialist country, didn't you know? Oh, and they said, prove it or, or, or we'll shoot you. Oh, God. And so he said, well, my New Zealand passport's in... And he couldn't quite remember where he'd put it. Uh, but he, he, he was saying it was in the top right-hand drawer of his chest of drawers at his flat. Yes. And so they took him there, with their guns, of course, and fortunately it was where he said. Oh, but, God. But then he thought it was time, probably time to escape from Russia. He escaped across Siberia in a goods train with the 50 British women and children also escaping oh. uh, that had been listed as goods. Yes. And being a good engineer, he was rather a dab hand at, at um, uh, finding the uh, people waiting to ambush him at the each station they stopped at, he was rather a dab hand at uncoupling the engine of their train and uh, and, and hitching their engine to his carriages and okay. shut them off. Yes. So he got away then. But he was called back later, much later, by Trotsky, who was in charge of electrification, and uh, he became great friends with Trotsky, very close. Yes. And uh, uh, Trotsky um, was very keen on the, the first... Uh, electrical station that uh, my uncle created and um, he probably saved Trotsky's life from Stalin's inspectors. I've got a photograph of when my uncle's switching on the electricity for one station and uh, all the men who've done the actual work are wearing fairly dirty clothes and then in the front are two people with shiny boots who've never done any manual work in their lives obviously they're Stalin's men come down to see if there's a flaw in Trotsky's uh, organisation. Oh yes. Yes. Oh, that's a... <laughs> and Stalin arrested my uncle and charged him with sabotage. Oh. Uh, uh, but he got away. Anyhow, quite an adventurous life. And uh, the, 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 well, well, tell me about when he first got interested in, in philosophy in itself. In philosophy itself? Um, um, well, I, 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 I got interested in philosophy through a particular subject, although I'm now interested in, in, in many, many subjects. Um, uh, when I was six, uh, my sister said to me, um, uh, you're going to die one day. So I said, that'd be ridiculous. Yes. It's for, uh, it's for beetles and, and, and uh, butterflies. Oh, and yes. I'd dead on our windowsill. And she said, um, no, it isn't. You'll, you'll die as well. And I said, I'll prove you're wrong. I'll go. I'll go and ask our mother. So I went out in the garden and asked my mother. Never forget the scene. Remember just just where she was standing and everything. And I said, "We don't die, do we?" And she told me the truth in the nicest possible way. And that created my first interest in philosophy because I wondered if it made sense to think that you could live after death. Okay. Yes. That was a subject that really interested me. I so I had no interest in being a teacher and, and philosophy, but I didn't know the name philosophy for years, but I read, I read a lot. And uh, when, where did you do, do your first degree in philosophy, Richard? Well, it was still, I suppose that was the central interest, although I only wrote a book on that subject rather late in my career, I think uh, after I retired actually, because there are so many other things that are interesting. Uh, my, my, my books, my own books, as opposed to translations I've organised or yes. my own my own books, um, and apart from the two biographies, my own books were either about mind and ethics. Latterly, I've done mostly that sort of thing. But some of the three of the early ones were about the nature of the physical universe. Yes, I found I very fascinating too. Whether it oh yes must have had a beginning, or how it could have had a beginning, what the beginning would amount to, uh, yes. whether there are the universes and so on. And of course, from from two and a half thousand years ago, people were discussing all that. And um, uh, when, did, when, did, when did you go to King's College itself? Uh, I went to King's in 1970. I'd, I'd already had seven and a half years in America. I was very lucky for my first job. It was. Uh, Cornell University Philosophy Department, and um, they were very good philosophers. And um, they went to lunch to talk philosophy every weekday. And so for 
I had a year's leave when I, for, for, for nearly seven years. Um, I, I really was talking philosophy with some of the best people around in the English-speaking world. It was a wonderful okay. training. I was the only person interested in the history of philosophy, but it was so good for my philosophy. And then they advertised a job at King's College, and I was interviewed and told on the spot I got it by General Sir John Hackett, who was oh, yes, Hackett, yes, Hackett. the president yes, that's uh, right. of King's. Well, look, look uh, thank you very much. And uh, I, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn off the instrument here. Uh, I, I, I got okay. it.